11.23 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. <clears throat> I'm XRP Future Million, and as I said, I gave out a warning earlier. <clears throat> and yesterday, saying that XRP had broken the uptrend, but my update this morning said, guys, if I didn't know any better, we started a bearish engulfing candle here in the four-hourly, and no matter what it tries to disguise itself as, we're going to come down because we're on the outside of the ascending triangle. We back-tested it and failed. As you can see, we immediately pulled back on the reversal candle in the next four hourly. Now we came down. Now we're suggesting that we can pull all the way down here. Like this could stop. It's either going to stop at 39.5, like I said earlier, 36.9, or we're coming all the way back down here to that 33 cent. And possibly we're even going to come back down to this uptrend that's lower than that because we never technically hit the uptrend yet. And it's a very long uptrend. So when we go back, like I said, we started this uptrend May of 2020 came down to the uptrend in december 2020 we didn't exactly hit it but came down came back down again may 16 2022 so we're continuing this uptrend and this is not as aggressive as you can go you could also move it in and say okay well that's that but i don't like to do that because it, i would rather have the second point up there and make it prove to us that we're going to come through it so you could say there's your two hits right there that's how it's supposed to be and that's how I get the ascending triangle. And you could add a bigger one if we would have broke out of this area, which we got rejected. And now we're trading between. So until we actually break down in the weekly all the way through, it's not done yet. Look at the weekly divergence. We're coming through the 20 cross the 50. Now it's about to come through the 100. So as much as everybody wanted to act like we're bullish on YouTube, all this bullish narrative bullshit is going to get you guys so bent over. Here, let, let me do a favor for you. I'm going to buy each of you a pair of scissors so it's easier to pull the pants down then you can bend over i'll even get you some uh straps so you can put your arms against the wall so it'll embrace you so you won't have to you know do too much flexing while you're getting thrusted out of existence because you're literally i'm telling you guys you're gonna have to pluck your eyeballs off the ground i'll even give you um something to pick those up with too because uh it's gonna be bad guys the bottom line is here i can joke i can kid i can say whatever this is gonna be bad the 20 is about to cross the 100 now and then it's got to cross the 200. So in order for this pattern to fill out, it's going to have to at least double bottom down here. If not worse. Like what happens if you don't hold down here? What happens if you don't hold this area right here at 33? Look how low you can come. Just saying, when you break the uptrend, you come back to where the uptrend started. And the uptrend started. We can verify this on, what is this? March 9th, 2020, we hit this uptrend for the first time. You know, now we've had three times when it's held. And if it breaks, you come back to where it started. And I get a lot of, I don't even want to say a lot of grief, but I get a lot of people that just don't understand. We're in a bear market. If we're in a bear market, we're not going to go up at every turn. Every time we hit a resistance area, we're going to come back down to the next support. When you're bull market, every time you come down to a support level, you'll hit the next resistance level. Resistance down to support, break that resistance. Up to the next resistance, down to that support that was just broken, that used to be resistance, turned into support, and yada, yada, yada. In this case, you go down to the support, go back up to the old support that is now tested as resistance, you come back down, and every time you fail, you come down lower because you're in a bear market. What I was saying is, is if you get lucky, you can come up to 52 cents because that is in the pattern prediction. It can happen. The problem is we're in a bearish continuation pattern. I don't know how many times I've used that word, and if the ascending triangle broke, the bearish continuation pattern would play out and you don't have to come to 52 cents. You only come to 52 cents if you broke the ascending triangle, use it as support, and bounced up. I could not be more clear, and for that, I'm very, very happy with my technical analysis. I'm very, very happy with the way I've been putting things out. Because if you're just listening, you're paying attention, you're understanding. You could have, if you're in a position this morning, came out with plenty of time last night or this morning to tell you before even these drops. But if we break this level, this is the key level. If we break down again, because we do have a rather big engulfing can on the four hourly as well. So if this does anything but a hammer candle on the next, when this breaks in the 40 minute, or about 31 minutes, where are we at right now? 41 was up there. I mean, this looks like a complete bearish engulfing. And now if it were to end here, it would start down here, the next red candle. So unless it comes back up and starts somewhere up on this half, and you have a what I consider like a hammer candle where there's no pressure and it kind of looks like a nail. I mean, that's the only way this is going to reverse and at least come back up and test this uh, broken ascending triangle. Otherwise, this is going to continue down. And if you have anything less than 41.3 or lower, 
This is going to be another engulfing candle to the downside, and this would probably break the camel's back on this bearish engulfing candle. The four hourly suggests we have to come down more. In my opinion, we broke the 20 day, there's no support. And like I did yesterday on the price, the price volume trend on the very bottom, look at XRP in the four hourly when you go back there. So let's go into the 30 minutes so you guys can see. So when we go back, we've got 600, 800,000 in volume up to 926. Well, when you come down here, like I showed yesterday, this is staggering 3.03 million in sell volume down here on average. You only had 900,000 when you were rising up here, 800,000. So it wasn't until we started selling. Now we come over here and the volume's decreasing as we're going up. And it starts to find volume every time we come down. Look how much more it's finding. So what I'm saying is, is there's still a lot of volume to be picked up down here and we have gaps to fill. And we fill these gaps, everybody's going to put their heads between their legs and say, son of a fucking bitch, I should have listened to XRP Future Millionaire. If you did, embrace it. If you didn't, you're in a lot of fucking trouble. Let's listen to Peter Ship, what he thinks about the economy. Reluctant to pass on their higher costs are going to throw in the towel and they're going to pass in these costs, especially since they keep rising. Initially, they had hoped that it was transitory. They were believing the Fed and other economists who were insisting not to worry. This is all transitory. It's going to go away. Well, now that everybody is accepting that the price hikes that we've already experienced are permanent, they're not going away. And in fact, we're going to continue to build on those hikes. The only question is, at what rate? Well, now businesses need to catch up and adjust their prices along with their costs. Now, of course, as they do that, they're going to be losing some customers. They're going to be pricing some customers out of the market. And so they're going to have to downsize their businesses to take into consideration that fewer people can afford their more expensive products, which is one of the reasons that we're going to see a big increase in unemployment. In fact, we did see a increase again in the weekly claims they were at 200,000 in the prior week and that was the first time we were above 200,000 in like three months and they revised that to 202,000 and instead of dropping to 190,000 which was the expectation we went up again to 203,000 so now we have two weeks in a row above 200,000 maybe we've bottomed out in jobless claims I think we probably have the question is how quickly are the pink slips going to go out based on the carnage in the stock market and what's happening in the economy based on higher inflation and higher interest rates. In fact, we got the import export prices again, and this time they actually came out slightly lower than expected. But to me, what's more important is the actual level, not whether or not we exceeded or fell short of expectations because the increase for the month for import prices was supposed to be 0.6 and instead prices were flat although the prior month the 2.6 percent gain was revised up to 2.9 now one of the reasons that we might have caught a break on imports was the strong dollar we had a big increase in the dollar and that should have made our imports less expensive that's just not going to be something that Guys, this has been my main thing where I thought the dollar had to capitulate. It makes things cheaper, makes things look like inflation isn't as bad, even though prices are much worse than they look. I mean, the dollar is over 104 spot, whatever it is today. Inflation is much worse than it looks. The cost at the store, the cost of gas, the cost of everything, except precious metals, is worse than it looks. We're going to be able to count on to be repeated every month. But if you look at our export prices, they were supposed to be up by 1%. And instead, they were up by 0.6%, so not quite as big an increase in the export prices. In fact, the previous month was reduced from up 4.5% in March, which was a huge number, to up a slightly less huge number of 4.1%. But it's the year-over-year -year numbers that are more alarming because import prices are up 12% year-over-year. Yes, that's better than the 13% year-over-year increase we had in March, which was an upward revision from what we were originally told. And our export prices are up 18% year over year. They were supposed to be up 19.2. So we didn't quite live up to that expectation, but 18% year over year is still a huge increase in one year for prices. In fact, in March, the initial estimate of an 18.8% year-over-year year increase was slightly reduced to 18.6 but these are still huge numbers whether it's 18 percent or 18.6 percent 
These numbers dwarf the official numbers on the CPI. And as I've been saying, I think the import and export prices are a far more realistic assessment of what's actually happening to prices in the United States than the official CPI. And that's because these prices are not doctored. They're not adjusted. They're not subject to hedonics or substitution. The prices are the prices. All they're doing is looking at what we're actually importing and what we're actually exporting, and they're comparing the price. That's it. They're not monkeying around with the basket and trying to figure out what was bought and what wasn't, what has higher quality, what doesn't. It's just an honest read on what prices are. And I think this is far more reflective of what's happening in the real economy. That's why inflation is such a huge issue. That's why you have consumer confidence plunging. That's why Biden's poll numbers are so low, because this is a massive surge in consumer prices, which means there is a collapse in people's real wages, in people's standard of living. That is why savings have plunged. That is why credit card debt has exploded to record highs. And again, in an inflation fight, that can't happen. Inflation is an increase in the supply of money and credit, and both money and credit are still surging. Despite the Fed's rate hikes, consumers are borrowing more, not less. So we're not going to have a successful fight against inflation until the Fed stops consumers from borrowing. But that's not going to happen because the only reason consumers can spend is because they can borrow. And if you built an entire economy on spending borrowed money, how are you going to take away the source of that borrowed money? How are you going to deny the ability of consumers to go deeper into debt and assume that we're not going to have a recession when the whole economy is built on debt financed consumption? And it's not just the consumer that's spending borrowed money, it's the government that's spending borrowed money. In fact, the government continues to borrow and spend money. Look, there's a new bill that's held up in the Senate now by Rand Paul, who's one of the few guys in the Senate willing to speak up, but there's a $40 billion aid package for the Ukraine. Now, where's this $40 billion going to come from? Is anybody in Congress talking about what taxes they're going to raise so that we can come up with $40 billion to give to the Ukrainians? Or, hey, maybe we should cut back on some other government spending so we can make some funds available because this is a worthy cause. We need to give $40 billion to the Ukraine, so we have to figure out how to save $40 billion someplace else. No, nobody is talking about where the money is going to come from. Everybody just wants to spend it. Well, where's it going to come from? More debt. Well, we're trying to fight inflation. Every member of the Congress admits that there's too much inflation and we have to fight it. You don't fight inflation by running bigger deficits. The government needs to cut government spending, not come up with more aid packages and expect the Federal Reserve to create the money because the Fed is supposedly fighting inflation too. Even Brand Paul is pointing this out. Where is this money going to come from? It's hardly an environment really to be in equities right now. Some people are suggesting this may be here for a long time to come. We had Jason Furman on from Harvard earlier this week on Bloomberg. He said he thinks it could be years we have uh, really high inflation. If that's right, if that proves to be true, what does that say for, to investors? There's three key factors that are really conspiring in a kind of poisonous cocktail that's hurting markets. And those, of course, are rising rates. Uh, worries about growth slowdown, particularly recession in the U.S. and zero COVID uh, impact uh, policy in China. And then on top of that, a strengthening dollar, which tends to be adverse for Asian equities. So it, it's no doubt it's challenging and we're off to the worst start in Asian equities. I really recommend people having some cash at this point. We're going to get some interesting bites at the apple. You know, some other high quality companies may even get cheaper than this as we you know, have a very volatile period over the next couple of months of policy adjustment and, you know, recession fears, recession fears fading. I think the House of Cards is about to come down anyway because the corruption inside our banking system is at all time highs. This is system. Oh.
whole system was rigged by the banks. This is the big picture. This is 1895 to 2015, 120 years of the Dow. And what you see here is the giant crash of 1929. It was nothing. I mean, everybody talks about the giant crash of 1987. There it is there. It was nothing. This put us into a depression for 25 years, that little blip there. Now you look at what's happening. This is 2000, this is 2008, and here we are today. So I ask you this. You don't have to be a rocket scientist. If this baby crashes again, how big will it be? I have directed he who controls the gold makes the rules. So why Nixon in 1971 saying the dollars coming off the gold standard was supposed to be temporary is so important is the U.S. dollar became fake money. It's exactly what my rich dad was saying to me. I think we're going to economic collapse because we spend too much money, we print money, we debase our currency. You know, during the Roman empires, they took gold and silver and they mixed it with lead and nickel. We're doing the same thing. And so the trouble with what's happening to our money is in 1971, when Nixon took us off the gold standard, the dollar became debt. And people don't know that. Dollar is debt. And they could print as much as they wanted. So the value of the dollar goes down. So if you're a rich dad, poor dad, I said savers are losers. Because why would you save it when the Fed can print it? it? It doesn't compute in my capitalistic mind. The trouble is, historically, for thousands of years, anybody who's done this collapses. So the Roman Empire collapsed, the Chinese government collapsed, and we're doing the same thing. We just, we just don't live long enough to know it.